Hi there. So in this video, we're going to talk about intracellular signaling. In previous videos, we covered receptor tyrosine kinases, which are very often growth factor receptors, and how they are often dysregulated in human cancers. Now we want to talk about how the signal are, is sent from growth factor receptors into the cell to get the cell to go through uh, and go through the cell cycle and proliferate. Um, and this is going to tie into human cancers because this process, again, is often very dysregulated. So um, we presented growth factor receptors in previous videos. They are proteins that are in the plasma membrane. They have a ligand binding domain in the extracellular region. The intracellular region has a tyrosine kinase domain, typically, and uh, tyrosine residues in the cytoplasmic tail. And upon ligand binding, that triggers dimerization, transphosphorylation of those tyrosines in the tail, and that is a key signal in getting cells to go from G1 phase into S phase. So this is how normal, most normal cells are regulated, and in many human cancers, uh, mutations in receptor tyrosine kinases um, lead to abnormal cellular proliferation. And so we need to talk about how this signal is sent from these phosphorylated tyrosines into the cell, in both a normal cell and in a cancer cell. So how do you transmit uh, changes into the cytoplasm? Well, first, we're gonna to have to introduce a new protein domain called an SH2 domain. So remember, domain is just a region of a protein. And there are, it's possible that many proteins can all have this domain. They can all have homology to this region uh, and share this function. So there is a domain in a protein called the SH2 domain. About 100 human proteins contain an SH2 domain. So this domain is made of a certain sequence of amino acids that folds into a certain three-dimensional structure that allows these proteins to have high affinity for phosphorylated tyrosines. So in a previous video, we talked about phosphorylation and the effects of phosphorylation on proteins. When a protein becomes phosphorylated, what does it do to that protein? Well, it depends, it could do a lot of things. One thing phosphorylation can do to a protein is allow it to form new protein-protein interactions. And here's an example of that occurring. So uh, you, see a pro you see three proteins, proteins one, two, and three, and there are three different proteins, but they all have SH2 domains in them. And then you see a protein on the left, this long stringy protein, and there are some tyrosines in that protein. So uh, none of these proteins have any affinity for one another. But now let's say uh, that tyrosine becomes phosphorylated. A kinase comes and phosphorylates that tyrosine. Now we have uh, a, a three-dimensional structure that fits into the three-dimensional domain of that SH2 binding domain of protein number one. So what we're doing now is creating a protein-protein interaction. So the 3D structure of the phosphorylated tyrosine fits into the 3D structure of the SH2 domain of protein number one, and now we have two proteins that have high affinity for one another. So they were low affinity before, no phosphorylated tyrosine, now they're high affinity. So we're creating new protein-protein interactions. So uh, SH2 domains don't bind, not every SH2 domain binds every phosphorylated tyrosine. There is some level of regulation here. It actually um, depends on the amino acids in the area as well. So it's not just the tyrosine, it's amino acids around the tyrosine that allow this uh, protein number one to bind to this phosphorylated tyrosine. So protein number two is not binding this phosphorylated tyrosine, even though it has an SH2 domain, because it binds phosphorylated tyrosine surrounded by different amino acids. So it's the local three-dimensional structure around that phosphorylated tyrosine that allows specific SH2 domains to bind to specific phosphorylated tyrosine. SH2 domain from protein number three doesn't bind any of those phosphorylated tyrosines. It might bind a different phosphorylated tyrosine on a completely different protein. So the whole point of this slide is just to introduce you to an SH2 domain. Um, it likes to bind phosphorylated tyrosines. Not every one of them, but it will bind specific phosphorylated tyrosines. And what we're doing is that we're creating new protein-protein interactions. Okay. Bring us back to receptor tyrosine kinases, which we now have tyrosines in their tail. And I've drawn here a SH2 domain containing protein. 
right? So is there any affinity for this protein, SH2 domain containing protein, for that receptor? Well, there's no phosphorylated tyrosines. There's very low affinity. Now let's say that ligand has bound growth factor, comes in and binds growth factor receptor, causing dimerization and transphosphorylation. So now we have high affinity of this SH2 domain containing protein for these phosphorylated tyrosines. And so we have now protein-protein interactions occurring. And this could be not just one SH2 domain containing proteins, but many, because many uh, receptor tyrosine kinases have multiple tyrosines in their tails that become phosphorylated upon dimerization. And when this is the case, you can actually recruit many SH2 domain containing proteins up to the plasma membrane. So the signal from outside the cell, from the growth factor, is now changing something inside the cell for creating new protein-protein interactions. And so this is bringing these proteins up from the cytosol to the plasma membrane. So um, this, what's this going to do? Which is bringing proteins from down here, up here. It can have a huge effect to signal into the cell. And we're going to go into great detail in later videos on how these proteins regulate molecules that are embedded in the plasma membrane. One molecule called PIP2, another uh, protein called RAS, and these are key regulators into signals into the cell. So they can play a role in proliferation, getting the cell from going G1 to S, play a role in cell survival, play a role in all sorts of cellular metabolism inside the cell. So creating these new protein-protein interactions by an SH2 domain containing protein binding um, phosphorylated tyrosines in the tails of receptor tyrosine kinases can trigger signals inside the cell. So uh, we can tie this back to some of the previous topics we talked about, growth factors, binding growth factor receptors. And we covered in previous videos all sorts of growth factors like PDGF, VEGF, EGF and FGF binding their receptors and causing dimerization and transphosphorylation. And we know that this is actually more complicated than that because there are families of receptors which can homo and heterodimerize. There are different ligands that can bind these receptors. But the end result of most of the signaling through receptor tyrosine kinases is phosphorylation of the tails of these growth factor receptors and phosphorylating them on tyrosine. And that will create new protein-protein interactions that can trigger cascades of signals inside the cell. And so we're going to focus on, um, on as I mentioned in the previous slide, over 100 different human proteins have SH2 domain containing, uh, SH2 domains. Um, we're going to, I just wanna talk briefly about two of the proteins that have SH2 domains because they're gonna play a role in two pathways that I'm going to present in great detail. So uh, here is an amino acid stretch, uh, Y, H, N, K, four amino acids. Um, now that tyrosine is not phosphorylated, but when it does become phosphorylated, that is a binding site for a protein called GRAB2. So GRAB2 has an SH2 domain and it binds a phosphorylated tyrosine with those amino acids in, right next to it. And this uh, amino acid sequence, or something very similar, is found in many of those um, growth factor receptors and is going to trigger something called the ras raf mech erc pathway, uh, which we're going to have a number of videos on um, later. Uh, there's another stretch of amino acids uh, that contains a tyrosine, and this stretch of amino acid, or something very similar to that, is present in many growth factor receptor tails. And when that tyrosine becomes phosphorylated, that is going to recruit an SH2 domain containing protein called PI3 kinase. PI3 kinase is a huge regulator of something called the AKT pathway, which we will get into detail into quite a bit in later uh, videos. So the, hopefully the takeaway you got from this video is when growth factors bind growth factor receptors and cause uh, dimerization and transphosphorylation of those tyrosines in the cytoplasmic tail, that um, allows for protein-protein interactions to occur, and that is going to trigger signals into the cell, which we will cover in later videos.